Hey everybody, I just wanted to give a quick update following my video yesterday. Um, the video yesterday was about the patch that was incoming. So following that video, just a few hours after that, they actually released the patch on live. So we got official patch notes and there wasn't a lot that changed. I don't think anything changed. Um, but I now have specifics for some of the changes, like the tiny chest and the high-end food changes. So I wanted to get into those. Um, so first off, let's talk about the tiny chest. I love this chest. It lets you micromanage single stacks of resources near your crafting stations. So I'm gonna pop up on the screen here what they look like. They're just one single tile. Um, they only require one single tile to build it. Uh, the cost to build them is really cheap. It only costs one wood, one stone, and one smoke stick. But they can only hold one stack of an item, a single item. And that sounds strange, but it's actually really awesome because that lets you like micromanage where you have your items. So, for example, I've got all of my cooking ingredients, single stacks of these cooking ingredients, in my fine kitchen next to my dragon walk so my cook doesn't have to go very far to get those ingredients. I've also got a single stack of bitter rice next to my gruel pot so that I can make bitter gruel, which is what I feed my students. Don't judge me. Additionally, I've got a small, ch a tiny chest set up to hold gut berries next to the dining tables for the staff and next to the dining tables for the students. Um, you can also use this to set up, if you want your students and your staff to be eating the same things, now you can set up tiny chests with those meals. Um, whereas previously you would have a single chest or pantry which have 10 or 20 capacity each. And it was really tough to manage like where your meals were going. So maybe all your meals were going to one of the dining rooms instead of the other. So I think this is a huge quality of life update and I'm really happy to have the tiny chest. I did not realize just how amazing it was actually going to be. Stan the tiny chest. Oh God, edit that out. Anyways, Next up, we have bitter rice. It grows much faster. Now, I'm going to be honest, it's kind of tough to tell exactly how fast it's growing, but it does seem to be faster. I definitely cut down on the amount of bitter rice that I have growing out in the field. Next, let's talk about the high-end food cost update. So, the patch notes state, Most high-end food now costs fewer resources, but takes longer to cook. Now, this is true. I'm going to put up a graphic on the screen that compares the cost previously to the current cost. And there are some big changes here. And honestly, like in my late game file, save file, I am changing the way that I'm doing my food. Previously, I was feeding everyone that is staff bitter stir fry, which costs one single bitter rice and gives plus five conviction. That's pretty awesome. Um, it's, it's cheap. My staff isn't super hard pressed to have conviction since they've all got bed chambers and they eat at the Sale and Manger. I don't know how to say that. Um, so, so that's a lot of conviction there. Um, however, I think I am going to change and start using, um, some of these new foods. Well, they're not new, but some of these new recipes. So let's look at the rock caramel the leafy greens, and the bouncing bread. So the cost of each of these recipes was halved. So previously they each cost four of their respective ingredient, being rock candy, crabbage, or jumping nuts. And now they only cost two. Now the time to create these foods has gone up, but if you're cooking in a fine kitchen with a level three fire mage, Honestly, it does not take long at all to cook these. So, um, plus 20 conviction, yeah, I'll take that. I think that's that's pretty awesome. By making all three of those foods, the only race that you're not feeding are the wolfkins. Um, to feed the wolfkins, I'm going to be honest, I'm still just feeding them bitter stir-fry. I guess I'm also going to be making bloody scraps for the wolfkins. 
uh, which costs four meat. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I wish there was a different method there, but it is what it is. So looking at the even higher quality foods, the ones that give 25 conviction, we've got meat and veggies, carom crouton salad, hardtack, and sweet meat. Now, each of these did have cost changes or reductions, I will say. Like the sweet meat actually cost the same amount of resources. It just costs less rock candy. Um, so it went from three rock candy and three meat to two rock candy and four meat. The others, like the meat and veggies, went from three meat and three cabbage to four meat and two cabbage. The, cru the carom crouton salad went from three cabbage and three jumping nuts to two cabbage and two jumping nuts. Um, and the hard tack went from three rock candy and three jumping nuts to two rock candy and two jumping nuts. So... I think, and honestly, Bloody Scraps just stayed the same. It still costs four meat, gives 20 conviction, but now it takes uh, quite a bit longer to craft. So I I think overall the update was good for making leafy greens, bouncing bread, and rock caramel, and everything else just kind of ignore it. Maybe make bloody scraps. I, I'm still on the fence about that one. I'll I'll probably be making it and then I'll run out of small corpses and then stop making it. We'll see though. Um, one quick note because previously I wasn't farming rock candy so I didn't know that this mechanic existed but if you're growing rock candy out in the open it will actually degrade when it rains, even while it's growing, which makes sense. Like rain melts the <laughs> melts the sugar, I guess. So um, if you're growing rock candy, make sure it's either in a room um, enclosed with some windows to let in light or just put a roof over it. That's what I'm doing. Um, speaking of growing in the light, one of the changes that they made was... Um, changing how plants grown indoors uh, are treated with the light. They now only get a 100% bonus for light rather than like you could go up crazy high, like 400%. So I think that's, I think that's fine. Um, to be honest, I haven't noticed like a crazy change in how fast things are growing. Maybe I'm just um, I mean, I've got a lot of resources on this playthrough, so I don't know. Next up, we have Ignium, which now costs 5 iron, 2 anemone cell, and 2 thorn tooth. The addition of thorn tooth here is a huge nerf to Ignium production, as each trap door vine only produces 2 to 3 thorn tooth when they're harvested. I really do hope that trapdoor vines become a bit more common in future updates to offset this change because as it is now, Ignium is really tough to obtain through refining and all of the tier 3 wands cost Ignium. So you're going to go through it quickly if you're not careful. The last update I wanted to talk about is that Quilted now lasts 6.9 days when they're built at the Atelier. This was more of a bug fix because the room was intended to increase the Quilted lifespan and it just wasn't before. But regardless, this is a pretty big quality of life improvement that cuts down the work to make the quilted by about half. So pretty awesome there. I think overall, this patch brought some really nice quality of life updates. I am loving the tiny chest. I am loving the some of the changes to the high-end cooking materials. I'm glad that they increased the rate that bitter rice grows. Um... I don't know about the Ignium, though, <laughs> but, you know, can't have it all. I think that overall, you can still get Ignium from other ways, like by doing four-star battles, you have a chance of getting Ignium, so that's nice. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Let me know your thoughts on this patch in the comments, and yeah, we'll catch you next time. Bye!